Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today's session is going to be very interesting as we are going to learn how to fulfill one of the reporting requirement of SOX compliance for M365. The reporting requirement is to capture the user's logon activity. We'll be diving into how to leverage the Microsoft Graph API to retrieve this data. This can be incredibly helpful for various purposes, such as identifying inactive users, monitoring for suspicious login attempts, creating reports for security audits. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped to extract user logon activity using the power of Microsoft Graph API. So, whether you're an IT admin, security professional, or just someone curious about user access patterns, stick around. Let's look into the steps first. Step 1, we need to first give that API permission into the Azure portal. The required API permission to get the access of logon activity is audit logs, read all and directory, read all. So let's jump into the Azure portal and complete the first step. We are into the Azure portal and let's go to the app registration of Microsoft Intra ID and select the app which we have created in our first session of this series. And the name of the app is M365 Graph API Learning with Examples. Let's click into the app and go to the API permissions. Then select add a permission button. Next select the Microsoft Graph button. Next we will select here application permission as need to create a PowerShell script to fetch the logon details of the user. So application permission is an appropriate choice for this scenario. Now search for audit log then you will get audit log read all. Select this scope and add it. Do the same for directory read all. Add permission. Go to Microsoft Graph application permission and search for directory read dot all. Select directory.read.all click add permission. Once added the permission make sure to provide the admin consent. Admin consent is provided by this button. Click onto it you will find that the warning sign is go away with green check mark. So guys we are done with this step. Now we are ready to write the script but before that make sure that you have noted down the client ID, secret, tenant ID, token URL. I have already noted it down. If you don't know how to get this detail, I would request you to please have a look at session 1 of this series which you will find in Mastering Microsoft Graph API playlist of my channel. So guys after first step we need to write a script that will help us to get the user logon activity. So let's jump into the Visual Studio code and write the script to get the last logon details for user. So guys I am into the Visual Studio code. Let's create a file called config.txt. This is the file I will keep my client ID, client secret, and tenant ID. As it is the best practice to keep your credential details separately. In real world keep it in Azure Key Vault. Now let's create a file called 03getusersloganactivity.ps1. Now we are ready to write the code. Let's start writing the code. First, I am defining the path to the configuration file as config.txt. This file will store the necessary credentials for accessing the Microsoft Graph API. Next, I am checking if the configuration file exists at the specified path. If the file is not found, I am outputting a message indicating that the config file is missing and exiting the script to prevent further execution without the necessary credentials. Then, I am reading the contents of the configuration file and storing it in the $config variable. After that, I am assigning the first three lines of the config file to the variables $ClientID, $ClientSecret, and $TenantID respectively. These variables will be used to authenticate with the Microsoft Graph API. Next, I am defining the scope of the API permissions, the authentication URL for obtaining the token, the endpoint URL for retrieving sign-in logs, and the output file path where the logon activity will be saved. Now, I am making a post request to the Azure AD authentication URL to get an access token. I am sending the client ID, client secret, scope, and grant type as form data in the request body. 
The response will contain the access token needed for subsequent API requests. Then, I am extracting the access token from the response and storing it in the dollar access token variable. This token will be used to authenticate API requests. Next, I am setting up the HTTP headers for the API requests. The authorization header includes the access token, and the content type header specifies that the request content type is JSON. Now, I am initializing an empty array dollar logon activity to store the logon activity data that will be retrieved from the API. Next, I am defining a function get sign in logs that takes a URL as a parameter. This function will handle the retrieval of sign in logs and manage pagination if there are multiple pages of results. Inside the function, I am making a get request to the provided URL using the headers set earlier. The response will contain the sign in logs data. Then, I am checking if the response and the response value are not null, indicating that the request was successful and returned data. For each log entry in the response value, I am creating a custom object with properties user principal name, sign in time, and status. I am adding these objects to the dollar logon activity array. Next, I am checking if there is a next link for pagination in the response. If there is, I am recursively calling the get sign in logs function with the next link URL to retrieve the next page of results. If the response or response value is null, I am outputting a message indicating that no data was received. Finally, I am returning the dollar logon activity array. Now, I am calling the get sign in logs function with the initial endpoint URL to retrieve the first batch of sign in logs and storing the results in the dollar logon details variable. Finally, I am checking if the dollar logon details array contains any entries. If it does, I am exporting the data to a CSV file specified by the dollar $output file variable without including type information. I am then outputting a message indicating that the logon activity has been exported. If there are no entries, I am outputting a message indicating that there is no data to export. So that's it guys we are done with the script and now let's run the script. To run the script go to the run menu and select run without debugging. And you will notice that a terminal gets open where you will see the execution output so let's wait for execution to be completed and it's completed the execution here you will see that it generated a csv file let's see the output into the explorer this is the file our program has generated let's open it and see the output you will see that all the values are zero as I am using developer tenant. Hence most value is zero. But let's sort it to find any outlier numbers are there. And you will see that these two accounts has been used 50k plus time. As this is my admin account and all my demo I prepare it with the same account. Hence the numbers are high. So that's it guys for this session. If you are finding my content valuable give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.